Hi, it's George, and today I'm here with one of my clients, Karen, and she has some wonderful um, insights and a framework to share with you all about creating what she calls a regenerative livelihood. I'm excited to dive in there. Uh, but first, let me share with you her bio, and then she's going to share just a couple of lessons in growing her business, and then we'll dive into her framework. First of all, hi, hi Karen. Good to see you. Hi, George. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So, um, Karen, I'm just reading out your bio here, and then you can um, describe any part of that that you think would be helpful for everyone to, to understand. So, Karen supports folks who are passionate about earth care, people care, and fair share to discern their livelihood paths and, and design abundance models so that they can fast track regenerative solutions to today's pressing problems. That's great. And there's a lot of um, richness actually that can be unpacked from, from these words. Uh, is there anything there that you particularly want to touch on? Sure. So, you know, so many folks I talk to are really concerned about the impact we're having on our planet and our, you know, our planet is really our life support system. Um, and of course this also um, degrading our life support systems also degrades our communities. And so, you know, we talk a lot about like, well, why are we degenerating, you know, our ecosystems and communities? Well, if we don't want to continue down that path and, you know, we're facing so many, you know, upcoming kind of bottlenecks where we're facing, you know, we need to turn around greenhouse gas emissions, um, reducing insect populations recently, you know, has been reduced by 70%. Um, lots of biodiversity loss, plastic in the ocean, like you could just go on and on forever, right? But the question I'm exploring is how do we turn that around? Instead of degenerating things, how do we change our economies and therefore our livelihoods so that we can actually be regenerative? And this comes from my background studying sustainability and permaculture for, for many, many years. And the trick is there's just not a lot of career paths that support this. And it's really about innovation and figuring out what are the new solutions to today's problems. And like myself, um, so many folks who are passionate about these things are, I call it allergic to business as usual. Like I got a master's of public affairs, an MPA, not an MBA for a reason. Um, and so, you know, I had, worked with many great organizations uh, to provide regenerative solutions, but never was really able to make it sustainable and it kept leading to burnout. So that's where I'm coming from with this. And when I say abundance models, I mean business models, but ones that again are not business as usual. They can, they incorporate fair share, they incorporate deep ethics into it. Um, you know, can it, accept and exchange different forms of currency. So maybe time trading or gift economy, really not aiming like, oh, I'm going to conquer the world and make seven figures, but how do I make a good difference and support my simple lifestyle um, that's really high quality and provide you know, great value for folks? So that's what I mean by abundance models. That's great. Yeah. Abundance in a way that works for all instead of just for one person. <laughs> right. um, like versus the typical way that mainstream economy thinks is sort of accumulation model, maybe, right? Um, so let's talk, touch on one more sort of business lesson, and I'd love for you to share your framework. So uh, the idea of that you, and you know, you got this from some, somewhere else, but it's, it's powerful. Love the problem, not the idea. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, that was a profound idea for me because I spent most of my life loving the idea. So once I started studying entrepreneurship, um, Ash Moria, who writes about lean startup, really drove it home for me because that's exactly what he said was love the problem, not the idea. So for example, in teaching permaculture, um, you know, I learned permaculture and I was like, oh, I want to teach permaculture, right? And that's like the idea right? So nobody who doesn't know about permaculture wakes up in the middle of the night thinking, I need permaculture, right? So if I'm out there, I call it 
evangelizing. So for, you could be whatever your particular modality is and you're evangelizing. You need this. It'll change your life. Well, if it doesn't resonate for them, they don't understand why they need it, you're going to be um, totally ineffective. So instead of, for example, with permaculture, kind of thumping the Bible of permaculture, I actually took a hysterical picture this morning inspired by some of the things you've shared of me actually with the permaculture manual going like this, oh, um, and to ask the question, are you permavangelizing? Because really what we learn from Lean Startup is um, start from your, the people whom you want to serve. What are their problems and challenges? What are the gains they're looking for in their lives? Design your offerings around that. It doesn't matter what you call it. And I really see that permaculture and other you know, wonderful frameworks that can really fast track regenerative solutions. We're stuck on whatever our modality is. Um, or sometimes, you know, folks get stuck on what I call like the legal structure. And people think, oh, I want to start a nonprofit or a B Corp or cooperation because it's so much eth more ethical than being a solopreneur, which may or may not be true depending on how you run your business. Um, but you miss the point that you're not actually going to, you know, have a paying customer necessarily. Um, and that's the most important thing that any of us can do um, to sustain our livelihoods is have a paying client or, you know, if it's a nonprofit to actually have um, not just our beneficiaries, but funders who will fund us. So that's, that was totally a game changer for me. Because I'd come all the time from, you know, kind of um, enthusiastic, heartfelt, and honestly, I'll say for myself, sometimes even a little almost sanctimonious, like, you know, this is the right way. But really, it's about serving our clients. Mm, I love that. Thank you. Yeah. It's uh, love the problem, not the idea. It's such a concise, brilliant way of saying something that I, th I think I try to say as well. But in, uh, you know, not, not quite like that. And I, I, I love the way that is. So thank you. Thank you for explaining and, and saying how that matters to you um, and, your, uh, and your kind of modality. <clears throat> so I'd love for you to, you know, we've got maybe about 10, uh, 12, 13 minutes left. I'd love for you to share your, your framework. Uh, you've got actually a, um, some images to share with us. So I'd love for you to, to take it away and, and tell us about that. Sure, I will. I'd love to just backtrack one moment and say one um, really concrete example of how working with me with you has really helped me. And that is because this idea of, you know, um, love the problem, not the idea. I really see your approach to social media and marketing does that. Now, again, I don't love Facebook and marketing is always, you know, kind of a challenge. Um, but I see that the way that you've taught me to like, make a post, make it simple, get it up, see what people resonate with is exactly that is you're really looking at, um, you know, what resonates for your clients, what speaks to their problems, what helps them get skills that they need, but you're doing it like live in real time. And that's like immediate feedback, which is so lean startup. Yeah. Um, so that's I want to thank you for that. Cause that's been really liberating. Like I understood the idea, but I didn't realize I could do it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. you know again because yeah. i'm kind of yeah. allergic to we can also say love the problem not the platform <laughs> i don't <laughs> know if anybody, i don't know if anybody like is totally in love with facebook i don't love facebook either i use it because it's a tool to connect and so that's all we can <laughs> so thank you thank right. you for saying that appreciate yeah. it yeah yeah thanks George. so um yeah so feel free to you can share your screen if you like great i'll do that okay so folks um i'm really excited to um share what I call a framework for designing a regenerative planning retreat. So lots of us do either year end or beginning, you know, new year's planning for our lives and livelihoods. And that's wonderful and great. Um, and if you're a person who, you know, like me and so many folks I know is, is wrestling with, you know, how is my business relevant in this time? Right in this time where we know there's a lot of global challenges that we need to figure out, we want to figure out what our role is so we can be of service. Um, I find that this framework really works. I've used it myself for almost a decade and I share it with my clients. 
And um, this is actually straight from the workbook that I provide folks. And um, the um, Karen, one, one sec, can you um, yes. minimize that Zoom window that's right there as well? Oh, thank you. Maybe minimize it. Yes, Just, yeah. I didn't even see that. Thank you for mentioning that. Mm -hmm. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So the regenerative planning framework, as I call it, has, you know, usually you're used to having a reflective planning aspect of your work. Um, but my framework that I've created, and, and it's, you know, really an amalgamation of lots of learning from lots of different teachers, is actually um, incorporates also earth and source connection. So, you know, if we want to have our work be more in service to healing our planet and our communities, of course, we've got to go back to source, right, and reconnect. So much of what our economy, unfortunately, has taught us is that things are separate. The environment's out there. You can throw things away. And we know that actually, scientifically and spiritually, none of those things are true. Um, so that's why I've created this framework. And so the regenerative planning has two phases, and that's around what is present and what can be. Um, and we dive into harvesting what has been present for the last year. You know, what are the seeds you want to actually take forward into the next year? And we actually honor what we've, you know, been able to accomplish. But we also look at, like, what we need to release. And this is powerful not just for ourselves and our businesses because we have personal successes and, and setbacks and business successes and setbacks, but also you know, for folks who, again, are wrestling with living in what um, a beloved mentor of mine, Joanna Macy, calls the great turning. So a time when humanity has to shift from the kind of cancerous industrial growth society and economy to a life um, giving and life nurturing civilization. Well, we also have some grief around what we've done so far. And so if we can release that, we can then re-embrace the, the love and energy, reconnect with the love we have for the world around us. And um, so I ground us in a regenerative vision. We talk about worldviews and how did we get a, regener a degenerative worldview and how did that set us up? How do we cultivate a regenerative worldview? Um, and a good chunk of that actually includes learning from Joanna Macy about this great turning concept. But also I share, um, folks may have heard of Robin Wall Kimmerer. She wrote Braiding Sweetgrass. She's actually a professor at the SUNY um, um, School of Forestry, but she's also a citizen of the Potawatomi um, Nation. And she shares amazing insights into our role as humans um, from her indigenous um, wisdom. So those things help us cultivate a regenerative vision. And then, you know, we select the seeds that we want to carry and then we plan forward. So this, um, you know, part of what we do is we design to actually get outside of the limits of our usual life. So Literally, I encourage folks to do this on the solstices and equinoxes. Um, not, you know, I'm, I'm not an earth-based spirituality practitioner, but these are such potent times for me that I really love. But you could use it if you have a, a faith tradition or a spiritual tradition um, at any time that's important or sacred to you. Or, you know, if you're like a caregiver and you can just find one day, four times a year to get away, whatever works. Um, but I also um, really encourage folks to consciously design a transformative container. And I provide, um, you know, a, a framework for that. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through these to give you some ideas of how I support folks in this um, checklist, you know, basically a design workbook to go through and do this. So, we, you know, I won't go too much more in depth into this. I think that's enough. But what I'll mention is this workbook um, and uh, the course, actually, I have a mini course in this that's available to anybody, uh, is available in my network that I call the Regenerpreneurs Network. So 
again, because I, I haven't loved Facebook up to now, um, I went with a Mighty Network. So this is like a, you know, interactive social media platform that's just private to folks who want to do this work together. Um, and it's free and available to folks. And um, yeah, I'm happy for folks to join us and work through that course for free. And if you don't want to stay, um, that's not needed either. But um, I find that it really nurtures um, myself to stay reconnected to a regenerative vision and figure out, okay, what are my next steps for the year? So I hope that will support your listeners to to think about maybe incorporating that practice. By the way, the December solstice, I don't call it the winter solstice anymore because we're a global community. And of course, in the Southern hemisphere, it's the summer solstice for them. Um, so I call it the, the December solstice, um, even though we don't even all share the same calendars, but for lack of languages, that's coming up on December 21st. So it's a really great time to, you know, go and plan your retreat. And um, one thing I will say is in the, in the workbook, one thing I, I emphasize is figure out time to get outside no matter what the weather is. And um, I help people think through how to do that. But that's, that's real key. I have had one year where I wasn't able to get outside and I still had a transformative retreat. And I share about that also. Um, some folks are not probably physically able to get outside and, and I want to encourage that there's other ways still to connect with um, our beloved living web around us. Wonderful. Thank you. And I will be sure to put the links for this network uh, page, as well as your website, of course, on the notes of the video. So folks, be sure to check that out um, in the, in the uh, notes and the links there. So, um, I mean, this is just, we're, we're just only, touching the surface of the depth of the work that you do. And I'm so grateful for it. Uh, I myself have, have, have a bit of a background in sustainability. And, and so I, I understand the importance of it. And I think it's increasingly more important for us all to, I mean, every single human being, uh, I think we make more of an impact now than we did, let's say 20, 30 years ago in so many different ways. Um, but just in terms of ideas online, spreading that, and uh, our livelihoods are are a model or an example for others, you know. So um, we all we all make a difference just just being ourselves. And so it's um, you know we, we we need to change ourselves and change our livelihoods if we have if we want to really be uh, be be real about changing the world too, you know. So so it's not, in other words, it's not just about <clears throat> doing our business and then giving to charity. Yes. You know, which is why a lot, what a lot of people's models are, you know, like, oh, just, just, you, you know, go into the extractive economy, you know, do all the stuff and then give to charity. And then that's, no, 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 it's the livelihood itself, how we, how we make money is, is a model for others and, uh, and is creating or, or destroying, you know. So thank you. Thank you for the work that you do, Karin. Really thank it. you. Yeah. And you and I know that actually the data shows that people want to buy the right stuff that's actually regenerating the planet and the people. And one of our wonderful growth edges as business owners is to be able to articulate, you know, to embed that in our businesses and be able to articulate it. And people actually feel better about buying from us. So. Yes, exactly. Yes. And the, the way we market is itself an educational vehicle mm -hmm. uh, of, and sort of like a value, like a culture setting vehicle, you know, and so it's important to think that through. So thank you. Thank you, Karin, for your, for your work. I hope uh, you. folks who are watching and, and kind of resonated with that and wants to, I mean, at least they should uh, check out your, your free um, network slash course and kind of enjoy that process. But you also have a, um, a, a paid course coming up. Do you want to talk, talk about that for a minute? Sure, sure. So my <clears throat> programs basically have three parts. Um, you know, you, we talked about designing an abundance model, but of course that comes after you figured out if there's actually a viable idea there that people will pay for. I call that um, the sweet spot. So that's the part that comes before the abundance models. And before you want to actually figure out if people will pay for something, you want to figure out what you feel your highest unique contribution can be. And so that's where I start with folks. And I have a program called Pathfinders 
that, you know, for anyone who feels like they want their life's path to be in service to co-creating our regenerative future. Um, and they're struggling to find their way. And that, you know, is, is weighing on their heart because they want to be making a difference. So the Pathfinders program is a, you know, a process that we go through to look at, you know, what are we good at? What are our skill sets? Um, our experiences, our unique perspectives that might have actually come from challenges that we faced. Um, you know, what do we love? Whom do we love to serve? Um, what breaks our hearts that we'd really like to make a difference at? Um, you know, really honing in on where there's an overlap between where we could make a difference and what the world needs. And I call that like discerning your unique highest calling. And so um, in addition, you know, I attract folks who that's the questions that we're asking. And so we're brainstorming together, you know, okay, what are these problems that folks are facing? Um, yeah. A good example, sounds, yeah. a good example real quick is, um, you know, not, folks now have doulas because they realize that that's the AIDS with natural childbirth. Mm -hmm. um, but what about afterwards? Right. And what would it look like? What would regenerative parenting look like? So, you know, somebody yes. had insights into that and built a program around it. So those types of things. But yeah. um, this program is just three months and it is starting December 13th. Yeah. And, so, and even if people watch this later, they should contact you and find out when the next one starts. So thank yeah. you, Karin, for, for doing your work. And I, look, I hope folks will follow up with you. Thanks so much, George. It's been great to meet with you today. Thanks.